Okay, what I want to do in this session is add a little bit more features to the uh, space edit so we can add a kind of grid component which lays down a grid that we can walk on and teleport on. We can add a color component to all the primitives except the grid one that we've created so that we can uh, put in a um, RGB color and then we can add immersive mode so that when we deploy this we can see the immersive mode icon and jump into a VR VR space so let's get started so for the grid we can go to the type of entities that we have I think we have a list of entities so we have box cone sphere and maybe we just say grid is a type of thing that will allow it to show up in the drop down and yes I think it can have position rotation scale it ultimately ends up being a kind of plane maybe this is a grid floor uh, okay then what happens you build default components so it'll still have those and we just have to handle it in the front end of how we want to render this grid I, I think is the case so if we save this and there we go start our server now if we go to localhost spaces I can enter this space that I have here and my menu I will now see a grid so if I add this I'll have a grid but the front end doesn't know how to render this so now in orchestrator let's also get rid of these files here I don't think I'm using them so let's just do a little bit of cleanup here so we'll delete this we'll delete this one and what's in this one this one find a pre mesh find a create material I had some previous work if you find or create a material you can have color or grid being get material by name so is the orchestrator using this it is not okay so we can port this function over we have find or create mesh and I think we can say find or create material Let's grab this. Control copy. Let's <clears throat> find a create mesh. Let's put it above here. Find a create material. Save this. Any underlines? I think we're all good. And so when we're parsing the find or create mesh, if we ask for a grid, We'll create a plane. So we'll do this. If entity type or entity type is a kind of grid, we'll create a plane. So let's delete the box and let's see if we have. Okay, so we do have our plane here and I kind of think a plane ought to be okay yeah okay that's fine that's fine so we have a plane um, I kind of feel like its default should be should be set a certain way so we can do that in the create default components area. So if you remember in the entity, we have some build default components. When the type is any type, it'll just set this thing. 
So when type is a grid, enum, and you put default components. So build default component components when the type when is this thing called? Build default components. Adders when you create an entity. Create entity under spaces, build default components. Build default components. Uh, I want to see what attributes we're getting in this create entity thing. Can we see IO inspect adders with a label? Create entity adders. So in here when we add something, did we get this uh, to say anything? Uh, we might need to restart this. Add something, bam. Create entity editors. So here's the space and it has a type. Okay, where are we calling the create entity? Oh, we haven't gotten into the uh, oh, uh, 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 nested, um, what did you call? This isn't storing it as data inside the data column. So create entity. This is just calling coming from space edit index. We're just uh, handling the add entity, which sends it here. Okay. Right, that's fine. Yes, this is fine. Gotcha. So then, okay, gotcha. I don't need this. We have the space ID and the sphere space ID. Okay, so when the type is definitively this string of grid equal adders. So when we get that exact pattern, we'll call so we can't call this because it'll be an infinite loop. But we can take this function out of it. Build default component, component set. <clears throat> so maybe we just make a private function to define private set default components. Given some adders, which is a map, so you'll get the default components, and you'll do that. 
Okay, so it won't. Okay, you'll just be given default components, maybe. We won't look at the type. We don't know what the type is here. So just give us default components or components. So we want to look at the type set components to adders, set components and adders. Uh, given components, so let's say given components, components, and we'll just map over them, set their type. K is the type, and V is the So each one of these is a component type. Let's replace K with component type, let's say. Component type. Put that here. Read a little better. And what is V? So V is the component map. Like it's component map. So this will be components, and we'll set that there. So what this does is we just get the default components for a type, which is this, and we return set components in adders, given the adders, and default components given the type. This one will do the same thing, but we'll modify it a bit. So we get the components equals default components, yes, given the type um, right this one it doesn't care. Oh, that's another way we could have done it. We could have said that grid. Yes, we could have done it this way. We could have just done this. That the default components for grid is position rotation and we want to rotate on the y on the x-axis by 90 degrees which is how many radians uh, let me do something uh, I'll convert it in a second scale is fine Therefore, I don't need this. So this is fine. Default components. Okay, so we really just refactored this a little bit. Let's refresh this. I'm gonna delete this, delete this, delete this. We add a grid. Don't see it. Yes, our front end isn't doing anything, but I wanted to know what the back end default. Gotcha. Okay, so that worked. And I probably can't see it because it's not double sided. Is it? So if I were to just set this back, do what is it? A two. Okay, and it 
3 just totally disappears because there's no back face, there's back face calling. So here, <coughs> let's just separate these out. So if it's a plane, <coughs> we'll do plane. And we'll just copy this. Else if grid let's say that mesh dot back calling Babylon Jeff render back side of plane. Create a double sided plane. Hmm. Side orientation seems easy enough. Copy this. Probably add it to this one too. I, mean, I don't see a problem with the plane being double sided. So then in here, if we do go to 90 degrees where it was going before. Hmm? Hold on. Rotation, let's do two, three, okay, four, five, six, okay, was it just too many rotations? Twenty, fifty, ninety, ninety one. Maybe it's just so thin you can't see it. Um, so 90. Okay, so I have one. Okay, something that's facing me totally. If I want, I want a 45 degree turn, right? No, that's a. One eighty is looking behind it, so I do want I want ninety degree turn. So what's ninety in radian? Ninety degrees to radian becomes one point five seven. Okay, so make this the entity default, which is that. What happens when we do that? Okay, I think this is flat. Yeah, the camera's just a little bit above the ground. Okay, so we've got that. <clears throat> and it's showing all the other things work. These be in degrees. Be easier to enter. Um, let's just leave it for now. Okay, yeah, these should all work. But now we need to add color. 
So if you get a grid, you don't get a color. Everything else can get a color. And the color can be a string and it can be hash uh, white. Uh, let's try that. Alright, so what would happen if you just uh, refresh this? And I want to add a box. Ooh, did something crash? Yeah, something crashed. Okay. Expected a map, got this. Color. Hmm. We didn't define the component type. So under component, we have to say that color is a string. Set components in atters. Okay, let's look at this. Oh, right. Okay, so we're iterating through these. So this actually is just a value. <clears throat> type. So we have type, what is that? And then data, and you're assuming it's a map, so Construct component data. This is what we should do. Let's break this out. Construct component data. So this is, let's say that this is component value. And you want to give it the component type and then component value. Define component value. Paste some stuff. Okay, so component value uh, value. So we get the component type and component So when is map component value? So if we get a value, we're going to put type in there. But if it's not a value, I mean if it's not a map, component, component, here undefined function construct component data construct construct component data if it's anything else so we don't
don't know what component value is. May not be a map. Then we'll return a map. And we'll say that the type is component type. But what is it? Yeah, it needs a key, right? You still need a key. What do you call this thing? Do we just call it value? I think it's made for maps. So I'm not sure this is going to work. I'm kind of confused how it will present in the front end. So I have this. I'm going to add a box. Crashed. What's going on? String doesn't have a struct. cast polymorphic embeds. Look at the documentation for polymorphic embeds again. Polymorphic embed fixer. So this was a map. SMS. This was also a map. This is also a map. So I think we just have to say that it has a value. Okay, let's create a component. Let's call this string value then. Vector 3. Oops. Add string. Components string. 
looking for, I could change that to rye, which is in primary key, false, and bed, which is just the value, and this is a string. Change set to create one of these is a string params string. I don't like just calling it string, it's going to be confusing. Let's call it string component. Mm. Well, it's just... Uh, the thing that required is the field, sorry, the value, cast, and require. I guess you can make one for a float too. And then in component, we just say that this is a, a XR components string. It's one of these things. So here, box. Oh, we got color here. Yeah. Position color. to cast it to a string but it should like start with a hash I guess anyway the default was this so now any new entities except for grid We'll have color. And yes. Added grid, added the color component. We need to make it read from the color component in the front end. So that brings us back to orchestrator. And we need to process component. So if we get case of color, we want to um, this dot find or create material and Ops will be type of color. Color and what? Color string is the 
the component data dot value. That's the color string. That's the material. Cost mat this. And then mesh dot material equal mat. Is that right? Control copy. Try to fix that over here. Speedy assets. Uh, try that again. Okay, don't have it made a difference. Anyway. Oh, it did save it. Cool. Uh, let's jump over to here. Okay, so let's try to make a red box. Kill this, kill this, make a cone, add it, color is red. Oh my god, it just works. Zero, zero, FS, zero, zero, green. Okay. And our grid. That, I think a grid can have a very large space to walk on, about 50 by 50 meters. Okay, let's set the default for that component. So a grid uh, that's not the scale though. That's the entity itself. So, orchestrator. Uh, when we're the grid, find or create mesh, and we're a grid. What are the options to this create plane? It was the width and height, or size. Size. 50. Wow. Huge place. Make it 25. And since we're not processing the color yet, let's just make a, a const grid material equals this find or create material and the type will be grid and no color string and then we'll say that mesh dot material equals grid material there we go that gives us that and is it double-sided? Let's move it. I think it is. Let's move it up so we can see it. Position 20, 20 meters. It's above us. 
and we can create one, another grid, bam, above and below us. So cool, we can create planes as well. Let's add plane to the list. Go into the list from component. We already have plane. Sorry, entities. Box, cone, grid, lane. Reload this. Go to the plane. Now we have a plane. But a plane can have a color, so zero, zero. That makes it red. We pull it up by four. Okay, very cool. So we added the grid. We added the color component. Let's add immersive VR with a floor to walk on. So grid, let's make grid walkable. And we also need to drop in the teleportation. But let's save our work here. Let's go ahead and make a commit. Pause. Okay, let's see where is an example of Babylon yes. um, web VR Simplest way to get started using a WebXR and will add a single line of code to your scene. Scene, create default experience, XR. <clears throat> this will enable WebXR in VR immersive mode. So here we create a free camera. Set target, attach control. And then here we add XR support. Uh, let's, let's grab some of this stuff. Go to our orchestrator. Where are we creating the camera? We do that in create a scene. Here's our camera, free camera. So target. I think this is exactly the same. Free camera, the scene, the target, yes. Attach control. One was true, one was false. What does that do? For no prevent defines whether event caught by the controls should call prevent default. Back compatible signature. Mm, okay, unclear. Is that true in this example? Or is that true? And then what? Sphere. Let's look at this example. Here we create the camera, free camera. So you can look around. You can also move side to side. Left, right, up, down. Okay. Pan around. And then create the default. A scene, create default environment. Okay, and create the default experience with some meshes. Okay, 
let's do that. So, <coughs> this scene, create default environment. This scene, async. I want to use a weight, got four meshes, environment, ground. Okay. I wonder if I use create default environment in the other code base. Create default. Doesn't seem like we did. I think that's just used to create the ground. And what does this thing do anyway? Create default environment. <clears throat> um, okay, it doesn't show me code, but I think Let me just be sure. What were we doing with the scene before? We're using a universal camera. Keys press. So we set up a camera, <coughs> attached control to the canvas, here we set false, and then we set up some camera listening, and we set up an XR manager, XR manager, this enable web experience. So default create the default experience and then we set up the teleportation manager well allegedly this line is enough so we set up this and then we set up with the ground then we set up we parse the scene and all that other stuff so with this I think it should create a ground for us. So if we reload this page, <clears throat> mm -hmm, yep, the ground is exactly at zero zero zero, which is why it's flashing. In fact, let's clear some of this grid. So I cannot see. I can barely see the floor. Go in there. I can't move it. Oculus Quest. There we go. So I can move around here. Um. But what else did you set up? GLP level is not registered. Give me a place to type, man. Um, scene dot debug layer show. So we have nodes. Jay's tracker. Uh, 
Oh, what a gate trap. Teleportation target. Uh, okay, background how do we get the background plane. Okay, and there's a skybox. Okay. How big is this background plane? Point of material, okay. textures, XR render, target texture. Okay, these are, I have an empty scene here, so these are all stuff that it created for me. Let's, uh, how do we do this? Close, none, or, okay, interesting. Um, Okay, exit immersive, right? Okay, reset the pose, exit immersive. Let's add a box. Unknown component color. Add a cone. This unknown component color. F -f -f -f. When does it say unknown component color? Unknown component color. Oh. Why, why would you come here? Because color matches there, unless it's. Attempting to process component, the type is color, and it says unknown component color. <clears throat> Why does it say that? Unknown. Oh, I need to <laughs> break. In the old one, did we have a skybox? Sky. Not necessarily. <clears throat> so anyway, let's leave it there, and it'll we can teleport on that grid. Let's just move it slightly off. So let's do grid. Uh, component. Where's my components? Components, components, components. Entity. Right, my grid. 
position in the y, so just make it slightly lower than that. Then. Negative 0 0.01. That way, when we create a grid, it's still clashing with it. Uh, it's still too close. Wait, did it take it though? <clears throat> what is the position here? Yeah, let's do this. Negative zero, one. And now it's not flashing. Okay, we got our we got our box, which is fine for now. Anything we add in here, add like a cone. Okay, so VR should work. You should just be able to click that. So let's publish it and test it. And I'll stop here.